You know, God is good, right? You know, it's a wonderful thing when He speaks to you and there comes an impartation and a change. You know, you'd be struggling out there. Finally, you know, you're so busy struggling that you can't hear. <laughs> you finally say, man, that's it. I quit. I'm giving up. And the next thing you know, you hear the voice of God. <laughs> he speaks to us in many different ways, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Amen. Well, the other morning, I, uh, during my prayer time and stuff, I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? He said, don't walk by sight. Because I was sharing some things with him about certain things. And he said, don't. He said, not by sight. Not by sight. You know, some of my questions is sometimes, you know, I know God is God, but he's my father and he's my friend. And it's like, you know, sometimes you, you wonder, why don't everybody, why doesn't everybody get healed? Why doesn't everybody get slam dunked in the Holy Ghost? Why doesn't everybody pray in tongues? And, you know, certain questions. Lord, you know, I've been praying for, why? And it's like, you know, don't walk by sight. It's not by sight. You know, I thought, well, how many times do we get caught up in sight? <laughs> Would you turn to Second Corinthians chapter 5? Second Corinthians chapter 5. Oh, hallelujah. We're going to get another message from the throne room that will change our life. Just a simple message. Amen? Amen. Christ is simple. <laughs> Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verses 1 through 7. Would you read it with me? For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God. A house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Isn't that glorious? In other words, what are you doing? You're beginning to put your hope and your trust not in the natural things. For if we groan, for in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. If indeed having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we were, uh, for we who are in this tent groan being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Let me tell you, sometimes your frustration is because you want to be more clothed with the glory of God. You know, you may be going, man, I want to get rid of this and get rid of this. Come on, I'm trying not to get off. But you know what the thing is, is you're trying to be more, you have a desire to be more clothed with the glory of God. That's why people run to drugs, alcohol, lust, perversion, pornography, and all kinds of amusements and whatever, because what they're looking for is to be more clothed with the glory of God. Because that's who we are, aren't we? And verse 5. Now, he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. Here we go again. Spirit is a guarantee. So, we are always confident Knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Now, what did he just do? He just brought us to the other side. Amen. Let me tell you, the Holy Spirit's always bringing you to the other side. His unction is always to bring you on the other side so that you don't trust in yourself on this side. Because we know that this side is the temporary realm and the other side is the eternal realm, right? Amen. In verse 7, for we walk by what? Faith. faith and not by sight. Say it again. We walk by faith and not by sight. Say it again. We walk by faith and not by sight. You know how many believers start walking by faith and then go back walking by sight? They become carnal. They lose the call of God in their life. They start one way and they go another way. The only thing that they get concerned in is money and self-preservation. It's because they become carnal. You know what happens? You begin to walk by sight. You begin to walk by sight. Now let me share with you. Uh, walk is a representation. This is Holy Ghost definition. 
the first thing that you and I need to do is when we're walking, we have to walk by faith, right? And not by sight. Now, to walk means one's conduct or lifestyle. It's, it's one's conduct or a new lifestyle. When you and I, when the word says, walk, walk in the newness, walk in, 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 in the likeness of Christ, walk. So what we're doing is we're actually, it's a new lifestyle. It's a whole new thing. That's where you and I are, uh, the old man is what? Put away. All things are being made new because we're walking in Christ. He was in Christ as a new creation. So it's a whole new lifestyle. You can never go back to the old lifestyle again. Never. Never. Has everybody got it? Never. You can never go back to that old lifestyle again. You can never touch another drug. You can never touch another cigarette. You can never touch another drink, you can never, 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 never go back again. Hallelujah! Or you're walking by sight. And that's what the devil wants to do to you. He wants you to walk by sight. Has everybody got it? Amen. Now, so we know that the word walk is a representation of one conduct, one's conduct of life or their lifestyle. Right? Now I want to give you a definition of a Holy Ghost sight. You ready? Sight. Sight. Because we're not walking by sight. The word sight is a representation of a picture portrayed, a picture portrayed through visual imagery and sound. Or created experiences. And I'll explain that to you. Sight is a picture portrayed through visual imagery and sound or created experiences. Now I want to talk about visual imagery. Did you ever have a thought and see it? It's visual imagery. Has everybody got it? Did you ever have a thought and see it? Did you ever hear a sound that brought a picture in your mind? Or something back to remember. Did you ever have something where you saw something similar to something? It could be a ball dropping out of a ball, uh, out of a car, but it reminded you of something of your past. That's called <coughs> created experience. Is everybody with me? So what the devil is trying to always do is take over your sight. So that you rely on sight. You may hear music. Don't you see certain things when you hear music? Amen. Yeah. Amen. You know? Some things aren't too good. Some certain music we used to hear. What, what brings us together is like voices, music, even nature. You know, you could be in a certain place and you see a certain tree that brings you a remembrance, doesn't it? Something specific. There could be a house, whatever it is. What's the devil trying to do? Bring you back to sight. Sight in the natural realm. Sight in the temporary realm. The devil always tries to tell you, do you remember when? And then he gives you a picture. Amen? And I'm saying, you know, you're walking by sight. Then what does it do? It affects your emotions and everything else. And and you're struggling because you've just touched and agreed with what he gave you is for sight. Mm -hmm. See, you and I are not to walk by sight. People think that it's just by what you see outwardly. No, it's what you see inwardly. You're not to walk by sight inwardly. You're to walk by faith inwardly. Has so everybody got it? Go to Ephesians chapter 2. Oh, hallelujah. So, if the devil has been convincing you that if you can get, just learn enough stuff, right, and then you can go back to your old life, you're walking by sight. Does everybody have it? Amen. Yeah, I mean, I can just get enough stuff to get by, <laughs> and then I can start walking by sight again. <laughs> Faith is destroyed. See, what he tries to do is get you to reason because reason is a guillotine of faith. 
Ephesians chapter 2, and verses 1 through 3. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, right? In which you once walked according... Once walked. Is everybody with me? Come on, read it with me. Verse 2. In which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the loss of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. And that's powerful. Walking by sight fulfills the lust of the flesh. Do you understand that? When you begin to walk by what the devil is imparting in you of sight, you begin to walk in the flesh. You're fulfilling the flesh. Because what is he doing? He's giving you his hope. He's giving you his hope. What he wants to do is convince you that if you can get enough stuff, you're okay. Then he gives you sight. What he does is put an imagery in you and he says, he shows you the big house, the big car, the job, the wife, the children. You know, he never shows you about serving God. Well, you can be just like everyone else that goes to church and keeps the pew warm. And then you begin to stink. Well, Lord, I know you just gave me a wife and children. I'm going to take care of them. Hello? You take care of him and he takes care of them. You do his will and his will will be manifested in your family. Has everybody got it? That's why he says if you're willing to follow me, you've got to give up everything. You got to give up everything. You know, my wife didn't rescue me. Mom didn't rescue me. Nobody rescued me. My daddy rescued me. My father, who loves me unconditionally, rescued me. He'd been waiting for me for a long time. He gave me every kind of sign and wonder possible. <laughs> I think he rented tractor trailers and put my name on the side occasionally and said, Guy, come home. <laughs> Everything possible, he'd been trying to speak to us. He said, if you're going to live by sight, read this sign. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. See, the world lives by sight, don't they? Things that they say, see affect their emotions, don't they? Yeah. And they get caught up in it. How many times do you see a couple of things happening? Man, you, you have a desire to want to get in it. And the Holy Ghost is saying, settle down. Settle down. We always have a tendency to be pushed by the devil. The Holy Spirit leads. Amen? Amen. Well, we have a tendency to want to walk by sight. That's where we have to beat down that flesh, don't we? What happens with us is then if we begin to walk by sight, we fulfill the lust of the flesh, which agrees with darkness and manifests works of unrighteousness, then we are called children of wrath. Has everybody got it? Amen. So you can't walk by sight. Go to Genesis 5. Praise be to God. Genesis chapter 5. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Genesis 5. Now sometimes people think you're goofy. Don't tell them you're goofy. Tell them you're crazy. Make it real simple. Don't beat around the bush. Just tell them you're crazy. I'm crazy. Praise God. I'm crazy for Jesus. See, God wants... You guys are going to be history makers. You understand that? He's looking for history makers. Hallelujah. We've been called to be history makers. Amen. Everywhere you go is going to change the course of history. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen? But we've got to stand on the truth and we can't walk by sight. Now, sight might say you have a broken ankle. 
face says, by his stripes it's healed. Amen. Hello? Well, it hasn't manifested yet. It will. It will. No matter how God heals it. Healing is process. Miracle is instant. That can happen, can it? Yes. Amen. We've seen it happen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Genesis 5 and verse 21. I want to go back to walk. Would you read it with me? Genesis 5 and verse 21. Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. After he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. Now he walked with God. What does it mean by he walked with God? He lived a righteous lifestyle. Do you understand that? That's what Enoch did. It didn't mean he skipped down the tulips with God hand in hand. It means he walked before God as a righteous lifestyle. In verse uh, 23, so all the days of Enoch were 365 years. That's a long time to walk righteous before God, wasn't it? Amen. And Enoch walked with God and he was not, for God took him. <laughs> you know what this is? It's a prerequisite for the rapture. Has everybody got it? That's a prerequisite for the rapture. It said Enoch walked with God, then he got raptured. Has everybody got it? Amen. That's why your lifestyle must be righteous to make the first train out. Remember the word walk means righteous lifestyle. Right? So if you're not... Now let me share this with you. If you're not doing the will of God, you're not doing a righteous lifestyle. Are you? Amen. If you're doing the will of man and your desires and your will, you're not walking a righteous lifestyle. You must be totally committed to the Lord. That's what he's looking for. Total commitment. Total commitment. Oh. Enoch's lifestyle was pleasing to God and he got raptured. It was a prophetic requisite, requisite to make it home, wasn't it? Do you understand it? This was a prophetic requisite. Before, in other words, Enoch represents the church rapture. You must live a righteous lifestyle if you expect to get raptured. Hallelujah. Go to Matthew 7. Matthew chapter 7. So when I said to the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to do? In other words, I usually ask him every day, what do you want me to do? And he said, don't walk by sight. And I knew certain things were going to happen because when he usually tells me something like that, I usually know I'm not going to walk by sight. <laughs> in other words, he tells us things to come, doesn't he? I'm not going to get into all the things that have been going on, but I can tell you I'm not walking by sight. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm walking by faith. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Or faith comes by hearing the voice of God. In Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. He said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. There it is. So if you're contemplating doing your will, claiming to be a believer, especially after you've supposedly walked with Him, you're in trouble. Amen. It's amazing how people do things and you ask them, well, what would the Lord show you? Well, I don't know. I'm going to do it anyways. That's the will of man. That's the will of man. Well, I just feel that 
Well, have you gotten confirmation? We've talked about confirmation, haven't we? You know what happens? They begin to walk by sight because the devil has put things in their sight that they become zealous for or jealous over. And he's planted that seed, hasn't he? Is everybody all right? You got that? Yeah. Why is this coming forth? Because it's preparation for what's happening. It's preparation for what's about to happen even more. Because this is the devil's access into the body of Christ. Causing believers to walk by sight. You know how many people walk by sight and say, man, if, why, didn't, if, why is God doing it with that person and not me? They're walking by sight, aren't they? Because God's going to deal with every individual the way he needs to. The problem is that some individuals are not allowing God to deal with them. Amen. So they go in circles. They never go. Now, you got to understand this. Remember, we talked about the lineage, right? And if you don't know who you are in Christ, and you're not willing to receive who you are, you're walking with a curse, aren't you? Amen. And you can't grow any further. You can't grow any further. So people go around in circles, the same old thing. I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to walk by sight but not by faith. Faith is not assumption. Faith is relationship. Amen. That's good. So everybody got it? Faith means that you heard what you're supposed to do and you do it. Amen. Now, the word says test all things. It doesn't say do all things. So as you test it, it doesn't mean that you do it. You don't go do it and then test it. Because that means you're walking by sight. If you're walking by sight, you're fulfilling the what? Flesh. And the works of the flesh is what? Death. The devil's not stupid. He knows exactly how to get to us. But God is bringing revelation knowledge to us to begin to sever some of these things in our life. So when he starts grabbing a hold of your ankle, you can slap it off because you'll know. You won't trip up. Has everybody got it? Because you and I are, are supposed to know the wiles or the trickeries of the devil. Amen. We're supposed to know these things. Okay, where were we? <laughs> 22. <laughs> Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, I completed total freedom. <laughs> Cemetery school, praise God. <laughs> I fasted and I prayed, I cast out devils. I did many wonders in your name. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you because you walked by sight. Depart from me, for you practice lawlessness. Lawlessness is a representation of walking by sight. Has everybody got it? Because if you walk by sight, you fulfill the lust of the flesh. No, people don't justify the relationship by works. That's what they were doing right here, weren't they? Listen, if I can do all this work, then I've got a relationship. Uh-uh. Then you're walking by sight, aren't you? Because you're looking at what you have done to qualify your relationship with God, and that's false. That's what these people were doing right here. They were saying, Lord, I did all this, and I did this, and I did that. He said, you weren't doing my will. You weren't doing my will, so that means you were walking by sight and you're walking in lawlessness. I don't know you. Hmm. Hallelujah. Justify the relationship by works, not by fellowship. Practicing lawlessness is the same as unrighteousness. Has everybody got it? First John chapter 5. So if the devil can get you to walk by sight, he's going to not only fulfill the lust of the you're, you're going to fulfill the lust of the flesh, but you're, it's going to produce unrighteousness, isn't it? Ooh, praise God. First John chapter five. Thank you, Father. First John chapter five. Now we have another teaching, I think, called spiritual sight. 
somewhere. If not, we'll make one. <laughs> but I think we have one. First John chapter 5 and verse 17. What does it say? All unrighteousness is sin. What's sin mean? Sin means what? Presence of evil. In other words, you're associating with evil, aren't you? All unrighteousness is sin, and there is sin not leading to death. We know that whoever is born of God does not what? Fellowship with darkness. That's what sin means, doesn't it? But he who has been born of God keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. Glory to God. Do you understand that? Why? Because he's not walking by sight. You know what happened to Eve? She walked by sight. She got snagged. He was polishing up that fruit. Look at this, sister. Good for you. Give you wisdom. It's good for taste too, but look how beautiful it is. Eat this and you'll be like God. Okay. <laughs> there went everything. Hallelujah. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the what? Wicked one. So you can't walk by sight. You can't. If you walk by sight, you'll be deceived and you'll fulfill the lust of the flesh. Acts 9. Acts chapter 9. How many times has the devil... You heard some gossip, right? How many times has the devil shared with you? <laughs> well, let me use myself as the example then. You know, in, in, in the jail, you know, we get testimonies of guys saying all kinds of stuff. You know, <laughs> there's people... You know, let's just say you're trying to come to the program. God has told you he wants you to come to the Total Freedom Discipleship House or, or whatever. And then people come up. The devil, the devil starts sending people up. Man, that dude's crazy. He's out there, man. You'll never... Oh, man, weird <laughs> stuff goes on over there. We had, one, we, we had one time somebody... We had the word come back. We had orgies going on. Yeah. I mean, all kinds of... You name it. You know, I mean, there was all kinds of stuff that was said about... This cul-de-sac. <laughs> or this cul-de-sac, right? <laughs> they're a cult. <laughs> they're this, they're that. You know what they're doing? Somebody said something, the devil said something, somebody said something, whatever. And usually it's guys that leave the program and then they come and they talk bad about the ministry in the jail. Then word gets around and, you know, then what do they do? They planted a picture. The devil plants a picture, doesn't he? Then the people look, they walk by sight instead of by faith. You know, think about it. Of, of all the guys that are in a discipleship, how many times did the devil try to get you to prevent you from coming here? Amen. I mean, he tried to bring you by sight, didn't you? But you knew that one day that the Holy Spirit said, this is for you. Hallelujah. But then afterwards, it was like, oh, man, and then there was that struggle. You know? How many times has, have you heard somebody talk about somebody and the devil painted a picture that when you got with him, you were expecting something real strange? Or the person was a real, you thought the person was a real jerk, a real mean, or uh, whatever, and then you talked to them and they were the sweetest person you ever met. Because the devil loves gossip. What did he do? He painted a picture, didn't he? He caused you to walk by sight instead of faith. That's where people walk by the mind instead of the spirit. Acts 9 verse 1, Saul still breathing threats, murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest. Now he thought he was doing the things for God. And asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found any who were of the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. He was hunting for believers. Now here's a Pharisee that was high-ranking, inherited his office because of his dad and so forth. Many, many years of cemetery school. And he was fulfilling his position. He was filling the cemetery. Amen? He was filling the cemetery. 
He was out killing believers and giving authorization to bind them. And they were, hey, listen, in some circumstances, they would be using these believers as entertainment, as meat, in bullfights, throwing them in lion's dens, burning them at the torch, cutting them in half. You know, we got nothing to complain about here, man. Putting them in boiling oil, watching them and torching them, mocking their God as they killed them. You know, they were not walking by sight, were they? But Saul was. Saul was walking by sight. But see, he actually thought he was doing the things of God. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven and he fell to the ground and he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Me. He didn't mention the people. He said me. Because these people were filled with the Holy Ghost. And he said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goats. So he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you shall be told what you must do. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. Then Saul arose from the ground. With his, when his eyes were open, he saw no one, but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. Hmm, that's powerful. Because Saul had to be blinded three days to receive his spiritual sight. God had to blind him so that he wouldn't go by what he saw. He began to deal with him, not outwardly, but inwardly, didn't he? Hallelujah. <laughs> Spiritual sight is faith. Spiritual sight is faith. Has everybody got it? Spiritual sight is faith. Carnal sight is death and doubt. So the Lord says, do not walk by sight, but walk by what? Faith. Not by sight. You know, you can sit back right now and, and look at all the things that you, even the little things that we've walked by sight on. God is beginning to remove all of these things that you and I have been walking by sight on. Has everybody got it? That's what he's trying to do. Why? Because if you're walking by sight, you're not walking in the Spirit, are you? And the whole purpose of a believer's life is to walk in the Spirit. Go to Romans 8. I have a testimony of this woman that um, she had gotten prayed for. She had a tumor on her forehead. Mm -hmm. And she'd gotten prayed for and the tumor was still there. But she believed the word of God that she was healed. So she was living with her mother. And uh, one morning her mother had some somebody over for breakfast. And she came down to breakfast. And the woman, her, her, the woman's, the mother's friend looked at her and, and said something about her tumor on her head. And she says, I'm healed. And her mother got all upset. What do you mean you're healed? When you stop that, it's been two weeks now. You've been walking around saying you're healed. Have you looked in the mirror and the thing is still on your forehead? She got up from the table, went up to her room. She said, Lord, I know I'm healed. Now show them. <sighs> Gone. See, by faith, she was healed. Hallelujah. Do you understand it? She was not walking by sight. She was walking by faith. If God says it, I'm holding on to it. The word said is, his word is above his name. He was walking by, she was walking by faith, not by sight. And she got healed, didn't she? How many times do you have high expectations for something because the devil has put something here where you're looking, you're seeing, and you're expecting something, but it's not, it's something carnal. Then you don't get it and you get all disappointed. Oh, man, how many times has the devil lied to you that way? What has he done? He's brought you into a sight, hasn't he? He's brought you into a sight. 
your expectations and your hope is Christ. That's where everything has to be. Your hope must always be in Him and nothing else. If it's in anything else, you're walking by sight. Romans 8 and verse 5. Would you read it with me? For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. So if you're seeing things of the Spirit, it's different, isn't it? But if you're constantly seeing things of the flesh, if your heart is pumping real hard because you're looking for a new car, new job, raise, house, whatever it may be, your hope is in something else, isn't it? You're walking by sight. You know what happens? Let me share this with you. I find almost every time that when God is going to bring something, there is no excitement because He surprises me. In other words, there's not a hope of getting something because then I'm walking by sight. There's faith that I already have everything and I'm walking with Him. And then the next thing I know, it just slides right in. Here. I'm like, whoa! Thank you, Lord! Whoa! Thank you, Lord! See, in that arena, there is this where he says, Come to me, you who heavy laden and burdened, and I will give you rest. When you're truly walking by faith, there is rest. Yes, there, is. Yes. there isn't a struggle. There's rest. Because you already have it. Do you understand? You already have it. <laughs> Verse 6, for to be carnally minded is what? Death. Death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity against God for it cannot, for it is not subject to the law of God nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God or those who are walking by sight cannot please God. You can't please God if you're walking by sight. Everybody all right? Oh, hallelujah. Go to Luke 4. Luke chapter 4. Hallelujah. <laughs> Got real quiet in here, man. Is everybody all right? Now, you know, you can look at your Bible, okay? That's not walking by sight. Luke chapter 4, in verse 18, Jesus said what? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me. Glory to God. To what? Preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind. And the word says that the devil has blinded us, hasn't he? he can he blind a believer? Yeah, no. Amen, he can. Yes. And set at liberty to those who are oppressed to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That's what he tries to do. See, he tries to get you caught up. Now listen, God blesses you, right? And you know it's from the Lord. If, that, if, if you're more sight, if your sight is on the blessing still more than him, then you're walking by sight. Do you understand that? Because your hope is not on any blessing. Your hope is always on Him. Nothing can ever change that. Ever. Even when something comes to you, it's not yours. When He blesses you with a, a vehicle, He blesses you with everything. He blessed me with a wife. It's, she's not mine. She's the Lord's. I give everything back to Him. You know why? Then I don't walk by sight. Because if I know it's back in His hands, He's got control of it. And anything the devil tries to give to me, I give back. The things that the Lord blesses me with, I give back to Him. Then I'm not walking by sight. Then I'm not picking up the burdens, am I? Oh, hallelujah. So the anointing of the Holy Spirit is what brings sight. Does everybody understand that? That's why it's so important about being baptized in the Holy Spirit and getting filled with the Spirit and walking in the Spirit so that you can have spiritual sight. Now, can a Spirit-filled believer get blinded? Yes. Yes. 
Yes. Prideful. Pride is blindness. Amen. Pride is blindness. You know, our whole purpose, remember, if you've lost sight of expanding the kingdom of God and bringing glory to the Lord in your life, you are walking by sight. Hallelujah. Now, another thing is, is the anointing represents fellowship. If you're fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit brings sight. Now, one of the things He brings sight to me and you of God's promises. He brings sight to God's promises. He brings insight to God's promises. He's always reminding you of God's promises. He's showing you God's promises in your life. Amen? Go to Luke 9. Verse 21. For we do not walk by sight, but we walk by what? Faith. Faith. Luke 9 and verse 21. And he strictly warned and commanded them to tell this to no one, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Then he said to them all this, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross daily. Everybody say daily. Daily. Hallelujah. And follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake shall save it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world by sight? <laughs> And is himself destroyed or lost because of sight. For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. But I tell you truly, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they what? See the kingdom of God. Let me tell you something. When your eyes see the kingdom of God, death is manifested. To sell. That's where it's no longer you, no more. It's over. Yeah. Glory to God. <laughs> Denying self means that we must not walk in the lifestyle of sight, but we must walk in a lifestyle that is pleasing to God because we're walking by faith. A lifestyle that's pleasing to God. Again, I want to reiterate if the devil has been convincing you that you can just do a little of this and go back to the same way of life, you're deceived. You can never, never, never go back. That's when the Lord said to me, do you want to get off of drugs and alcohol or do you want a whole new life? I said, I want a whole new life. And he said, show me. In other words, show me that you mean it and I'll give you a whole new life. From that point on, things began to change. And I'm still getting a new life. My new life hasn't changed. It's changing from glory to glory. Glory to glory. That's where we're going. From glory to glory. So we finally shed this earth suit. Get a new suit. Hallelujah. Never have to wash again. Never have to send it to cleaners. Have it pressed. But a new suit that will stand in the glory of God. Hallelujah. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 5. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 5. I think I'll get there. <laughs> Everybody there yet? Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Whoever believes that Jesus... Is Christ is born of God. Wait a minute. I said verse 5, right? Yes, yes. Praise God. Let's try it then. <laughs> who is he who overcomes the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the what? 1 John? Oh, 1 John 1. Man, am I walking by sight or what? <laughs> Told you, reading the word is not walking by sight. <laughs> I've had a rough day today. <laughs> no excuses, right? 
Get behind me, devil. First John chapter 1 and verse 5. Go ahead, you start. I'll find out if I'm in the right place. <laughs> This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him there is what? No at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Hello? Did you ever hear the Holy Spirit say, you liar? Oh, forgive me, Lord. To hear somebody else say you're a liar. You might have heard that more than the Holy Spirit. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all fellowship with darkness. Because that's what sin is, isn't it? If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, if we confess our relationships with darkness, our fellowships, our agreements with darkness, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Not walking by sight is practicing the truth, allowing us with fellowship with Him because the truth is light. Does everybody understand that? Truth is light. So, if you're not walking by sight, you're actually practicing truth because you're walking by faith. Amen? You're walking by faith. That means you're fellowshipping with light. And by fellowshipping with light, truth is manifested in you. God is washing you from your sins. So you can't... It's just like that woman that came and, and they... They said to her, you know, hey, we caught her in fornication. And Jesus was standing there and saying, you know, you know, all you guys have caught her? Uh, which one of you hasn't sinned yet? Throw the first one. They all dropped the stones, didn't they? You know what he did? They were walking by sight, weren't they? You know what he did? He brought them to themselves. He said, check your own self out. And every one of them had to drop in. Then he looked at her. And he forgave her, didn't he? But there's something he said to her. Go and sin no more. Or a worse thing will come upon you. Hello? Hallelujah. So the first thing we must always do by walking by faith and not by sight is walk by faith. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> The second thing we must do is walk in truth. Hallelujah. In Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Glory to God. Ephesians chapter 4. In verses 1 through 3. 1 to 3. And read it with me, please. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. In other words, to walk a what? Upright life. A lifestyle worthy. A lifestyle pleasing to God. I beseech you to walk a lifestyle pleasing to God so that you will fulfill your calling because you were called. With what? All lowliness, gentleness, with long-suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. In the bond of peace. Walk worthy to your calling as children of light, not by sight. In other words, this is what we call the third thing we must do is be consistent. Our walk must be consistent. Is everybody with me? So it must be by faith, it must be in truth, and it must be consistent. 
Hallelujah. Go to chapter 5. And verses 8. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret, but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. The fourth thing we must do is expose blindness. Does everybody understand that we must expose blindness? Because blindness is a representation. If there's spiritual blindness there, that means there's association with darkness, isn't there? So we must expose blindness. You know, it's amazing to me sometimes when people aren't worshiping the Lord when God gives an opportunity to worship God. You know what it is? They're blinded. They're walking by sight, aren't they? Some people, uh, look at it, if, they're, if, if they don't, if they don't feel like it, now I want you to understand something that if you don't feel like it, it's because you're walking by sight. Well, I don't feel like doing this. That means you're walking by sight. Because you can't walk that way anymore. You can't walk that way anymore. That's over with. Because the old life was a representation of you did what you felt like. Amen. Or you did what you wished. Uh -huh. right? Or you did what you desired. Or you did what you believed. <laughs> even though it was wrong. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so the fourth thing we must do is expose blindness. And of course, understand what the will of God is for us, right? Amen. If you're going to walk by sight, you'll never understand what the will of God is for you. You must walk by faith. Because faith comes by hearing. Genesis 17. Not by sight. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, my Lord. You know, even if people walk by sight in certain arenas, and this is where we have to take dominion over our flesh, you'll be at work and something is done wrong and you're, you're assuming that something else, somebody did it. Right? Something's not right somewhere along the line. And the devil's telling you, you know who did this, right? And he starts beefing you up so that when you get to that person, and then when you start talking to that person, you find out that that person had nothing to do with it. You know, you know why? Because the devil had painted a picture, didn't he? He painted a picture and we began to walk by sight. See, so you can't even do it in that arena, can you? You know, some people don't come to counsel because the devil's painted a picture already because they're walking by sight. They won't, they won't come to counsel because the darkness will be exposed. So they're walking by sight. Amen? Some people won't come up and get prayed for because they'll get really exposed. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know what they're doing? They're walking by sight. So everybody got it? Amen. Some people won't come up for prayer because they're afraid of getting exposed, aren't they? Amen. And they're going to get exposed. And I'm not going to say, I'm not saying openly. I'm saying the Holy Spirit is going to expose them to them. Amen. Amen. Amen? Unless God chooses to expose them another way. But it's all for their healing, isn't it? Oh, Hallelujah. Well, I just don't believe in that stuff. Well, you're walking by sight then, not by faith. <laughs> well, I didn't feel anything. Well, then you're walking by sight and not by faith. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Praise God. And uh, Genesis 17, verses 1 and 2. 
When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said to him, I am the Lord Almighty. What? Walk before me and be what? Blameless. Now look at it. And I will make my covenant between me and you, and you will multiply exceedingly. Ooh. That's glorious. So as you live a lifestyle pleasing to God, not by sight, right, but by faith, you are going to walk blameless before the Lord. And His covenant promises will be manifested through you and to you in every area. Does everybody got it? And He will bless you exceedingly. You will multiply. Remember, He's in the multiplication business. Things must be expanding and getting better, not getting worse. Oh, hallelujah. So we're to walk before Him blameless. Go to 1 John chapter 2. First John chapter two. First John chapter two. Didn't we go here? Oh, okay. First John chapter. Okay. Praise God. And verse 4. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar. It's the second time he called somebody a liar. And the truth is not in him because he's walking by sight, not by faith. But over keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also walk, also to walk just as he walked. Amen. So if you're abiding in him, you're going to walk an upright, pleasing life just like the Lord did. Amen? Amen. 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 Oh, hallelujah. So we've got to walk just like he did. Go to Isaiah 11. you ever notice that sometimes the Holy Spirit, you, you'll think that every time you come to a Bible study, God is speaking directly to you? Yeah. He is. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> don't, even, don't even go by sight. Just accept it. He's speaking to every one of us in here. <laughs> don't try and shrug it off. Well, he must be speaking about somebody else. <laughs> That's walking by sight. And every time I come to a Bible study, I think he's speaking just about me. He is. <laughs> Go ahead again. Isaiah 11, verses 3 through 5. Would you read it with me? His delight is in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears. Hello? Hey, if, if Jesus is doing this, Shouldn't we? Amen. It says he's not going to judge by the sight of his eyes or by the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness shall be the tr belt of his loins and faithfulness the belt of his ways. So he's not going to judge by sight or what he hears either. So neither should we. Amen? Amen? We walk by faith. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. That's how we spiritually compare things, isn't it? And the Holy Spirit will discern because the devil has to come as an angel of light and try to proclaim the word of God, but it's you'll know the fruit of it. I pray. Second Corinthians 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Oh, hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 10.
and verse 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3. Is everybody there? Let's read it together. Uh, is everybody there? <laughs> For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, for pulling down strong now a stronghold is a memory lie right casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God or the truth of God bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ now whose responsibility is this? ours so when the devil starts speaking in and starts planting stuff in you you begin to see things that you know well most of the time you don't know hello that's why you have to Spiritually compare things, don't you? you got to get rid of them. Bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And being ready to punish all these lies of disobedience when your obedience is what? Fulfilled. So you can't do something until you start walking by faith. That's obedience. You must walk by faith. That's obedience. Faith comes by what? That's obedience, isn't it? That's not assumption. Well, I thought this. Well, who gave you that thought? Well, you have not because you asked not. You know, the first rule in the discipleship house is do not assume. Because that brings trouble every time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23. Glory to God. Proverbs 23. Verse 7. Would you read it with me? For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So, has everybody got it? So as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So what's the devil trying to do? Cause you to walk by sight, isn't he? So is he. That's why when some of us that were younger, whatever, told we were told we'll never mount to anything, that vision is still there. So in things that happen in our life of created experiences, that vision is still there. Some of the things that we did, the devil likes to bring up to us and beat us up, and that vision is still there, isn't it? That's where you can't walk by sight. Amen? Because everything is about sight in that arena, isn't it? Because your imagination, the word imagination, the word from it is called image. That's the window to the other side. And that's where the devil likes to get us. That's where you got to keep it clean by the blood and surrender to God every day. And you'll have to discern what's of God and what's not of God. So a man thinketh, so he is. A man seeth, so he is. Has everybody got it? Everybody in this room has been beat up some way or another by that. Some of us are still being beat up by it. Hallelujah. Matthew 9. Matthew chapter 9. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 9. And verses 20 to 22. And suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. For she said to herself, If only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. See, she had already was well. The touching of the garment was this, the tangible... It was, the, it was just like Jesus who died in the garden, right? But he died to self in the garden, didn't he? But on the cross is his physical death. Well, she already believed that she could be healed. Her faith made her whole. Do you understand that? So when she did touch the hem of his garment, she got healed because she believed it. You know any other people touched the hem of his garment? Many. Many bumped into him and touched him and 
But they didn't get healed. She did. And, and Jesus turned around and said to her, Be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. Your faith made you well. Not what you did. Your faith made you well. Amen? And the woman was made well from that hour. <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Um, go to Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3. But faith without works is dead, right? <laughs> so she didn't, she didn't just sit there while Jesus walked by and said, I'm going uh, to get made well. She knew that she was putting her faith in action, wasn't she? That's how she got made well. Your faith is being put in action. When you chose to come to the Total Freedom Program, God already started making you well. Your faith was put in action. Do you understand that? Now, of course, the devil's going to try to remove that faith and start having you walk by sight. <laughs> he does that when you, when, with brand new babies and believers, doesn't he? Hey, there have been people who have been delivered and healed instantly. The glory of God fell upon them and everything. You know what? They walked for faith for about two months. After that, they started walking by sight. And they ended up going backwards instead of forwards. That's why they, they weren't discipled, were they? Hallelujah. Proverbs, what I say? Three. Three? Three? Okay. Oh, verse 5. Would you all read this with me? Come on, everybody read this with me. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Say it again. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. Oh, hallelujah. Don't lean on your own sight, right? In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. Did you ever notice that when you get something in sight, an image, we have this understanding of, or we believe we have this understanding of what we just saw? And then sometimes we find out later it's incorrect. We either get offended, get in trouble, or somebody else does. Amen. And the devil wants to tell you you know it all. Man, you got the inside information now. Amen? Don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Hello. Hallelujah. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Here we go. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. You know how many people are out there thinking they can make it on their own with drugs and alcohol? I can do it. I've tried it. I know I can do it myself. Well, the devil's given them a vision, hasn't he? he they're walking by sight. And they're not leaning on their own. Well, they are leaning on their own understanding. <laughs> they're not leaning on God, though, are they? How many times have all of us in here tried to do something ourselves, convinced that we could do it, and blow it? Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. <laughs> Praise God. Depart from evil. Don't, don't lean on your own understanding. Trust God. Walk in faith. So, the fifth thing we can't do is lean on our own, on, on own understanding. Amen? The fifth thing is don't lean on your own understanding. Oh, hallelujah. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. A couple more scriptures and we're done. Praise God. James chapter 1. And verses 2 through 4. My brother, count it all what? Joy. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Hello? When you lean on your own sight. <laughs> Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience or endurance. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. That's walking by faith. 
If you're walking by faith, you don't lack anything. If you're walking by sight, you lack. Because that means you're leaning on your own understanding and doing it in your own strength. And you're blessing yourself and you're stopping God from blessing you. That's why things don't last. So the sixth thing we're to do is count it all joy. Amen? Count it all joy. What's the sense of being miserable about it? Just count it joy. Praise God. So you blew it, count it all joy. You repent, turn away, depart from evil. Even when you don't blow it, God is still going to bring you through a trial. How's He going to test you? He already knows you. He wants you to know you. <laughs> Amen? So you're going to be tested. Why? You're going to be tested on your faith. Jesus was tested. He went into the wilderness for 40 days and was tempted by the devil. He had to be tested. Why? So he knew who he was and so the devil knew who he was. Oh, hallelujah. James chapter 5 and verse 13. If any among you is suffering, what does it say? Let him pray. Let him pray. Amen? Yeah. In other words, if somebody's suffering, you know what you say? Go pray. Go pray. <laughs> if anyone among you is suffering, let him pray. If any are you cheerful, let him sing psalms. If any among you is sick, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with the oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of what? Faith. Faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up, and if he has committed sins, he will be what? Forgiven. Forgiven. So, the seventh thing that we must do is pray. Pray. Pray, 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 pray. Pray, pray, pray. It says, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be what? Healed. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man of Alice Month. In other words, the effective fervent prayer of someone who's living a life pleasing to God is going to avail with much. And I'm going to close with this scripture, Philippians 3. Because we're going to walk by faith, not by sight. So your job seems to be a little ridiculous. You can't walk by sight. <laughs> Things just don't seem to be going your way. Things look gloomy. You got sucked up in the butt ministry, right? But, 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 but. That's compromise. That's comparing. That's sight. It's not faith. Remember, you don't walk by sight. You walk by faith. Walking by faith pleases God. You know, even when we start worshiping God, right? Man, you may not like feel like it. You may be tired and working all day. Take dominion over the flesh. You know, you might have been fasting for whatever. Tired. That's when God honors. That's what He honors. He, he honors someone. See, He can trust someone who doesn't walk by sight and by feeling. Those are the ones He trusts. You're earning the trust of the Lord when you do that. Philippians 3.17 Read it with me. Brethren, join in following my example and note those who walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body, that it may be conformed to His glorious body, according to the working by which He is able even to subdue all things, to himself. Hallelujah. 
remember, we don't belong here. <laughs> and He's coming soon. So don't walk by sight. You walk by faith. Amen. 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 Father, we thank You for Your Word tonight. We give You glory and honor and praise. Lord, let this seed be imparted and prepare us for the testing that You're going to bring us. Prepare us, Lord. We promise to give you all the glory, all the honor, and the praise as we overcome to the words of knowledge that you've given us tonight. We commit all things to you and repent of any area of our life that we've walked by sight. We sever ourselves from the association of those spirits that cause us to walk by sight and loose ourselves from their holds as we begin to walk by faith from this night forward. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. And everybody said...